Good afternoon, my name is Joshua Strander. Uh, the reason for this video is to describe the IEP, IEP process um, or the individualized education process to uh, a parent that might be new to um, students receiving services for potential disabilities. Uh, first off, I'm gonna start with referral. So referral can actually come from, um, it can come from a parent, it can come from a student, it can come from school personnel, um, basically anybody who has a role in the parent's child's life educationally. Um, if they think that there is a potential disability that the child might have, then they can be referred to to get testing done to see if there is a potential disability. Um, after that, there is an evaluation. So the evaluation is um, basically established at the point of once referral is done, uh, the evaluation is to figure out what disabilities the student has. Um, it does have to be completed within 30 school days uh, to determine the special education services as eligibility of the child. Um, and that's just, that's just law uh, based on the idea with IDEA and um, so after the evaluation process if the student has deemed that they do have a disability whether it be autism or an intellectual disability or one of many of the disabilities from the list then uh, we have to talk about their eligibility so what services can they receive um, do they receive an IEP an individualized education plan and uh, what steps to take after that. So the eligibility is determined after the evaluation. And then after um, eligibility is discussed, uh, we talk about the IEP itself and what the components of the IEP are. So that may look different from elementary education to secondary school education depending on how the student progresses through their lifetime, how they learn to um, react in a classroom with their disability, if it is affecting their social ability between other students, if it's affecting their coursework and their ability to get work done. Um, the IEP kind of hones in on what the student needs uh, based on accommodations and modifications. So what are accommodations and modifications. Uh, basically, they are tools used in the IEP to help the student uh, be successful in their academics. So um, an example may be uh, test modifications. So a student might have preferential seating during a test or they might go to a different room during a test or they might have extended time uh, depending on what the IEP is establishes for them and then the IEP is also um, made by a not just one person but a group of uh, education professionals as well as the parent and guardian and their role in the IEP process is uh, start to finish the parent guardians role in the IEP process is huge it dictates whether the student can get referrals dictates whether um, they'll be evaluated. You can choose to not get evaluated if you don't want to, uh, which is rare. Um, they talk about eligibility of what um, accommodations and things that their child will receive. They have to agree and consensualize all of the different components of the IEP. Um, and every year that is annually reviewed, the parent or guardian is a part of the process to make sure that their child gets the best care and services that um, the student can provide, or the, excuse me, the school can provide. And um, yeah, so a lot of information about the IEP process, but again, it starts with referral. Then you move on to evaluation, they'll get evaluated. Then we figure out what they're eligible for based on the disabilities, if they have any. Um, then we talk about the IEP and the different components. And then the 
their involvement in the whole process is, is a big one. So thank you for your time.